Hey sightseers, along with all the rest of you beautiful people out there on YouTube, that's the million dollar question, right? How is it that somebody like me could possibly have heart disease? Hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have that answer for you, along with my personal journey to getting there. Now much like walking back up this hill is a bit of a struggle, my journey, my personal journey to answering the question of whether or not I have heart disease has been a struggle to say the least. I'm happy to say I'm relieved actually that I finally got some answers We'll get into that though. After we get home, Marty and I just wanna be able to <laughs> make it home in one piece and I don't think he needs to hear me in the background while he's concentrating. Oh, just give me a minute here. I need to stop and catch my breath. For those of you who don't know, that was one of the first indications that something was wrong was actually me losing my breath. As you can see, I still struggle with that, especially uh, going upstairs, going up hills, especially when they're snow covered, and anything else that, you know, gets my heart moving or pumping or exerting myself, putting that stress load on my heart. I'm talking ordinary things like doing simple household chores, vacuuming, cleaning my bathroom, even sometimes standing for a really long time by the stove, cooking, I would get, like, start to feel funny, but it never clicked that there was something going on with my heart. Because why would it? I thought of myself as being pretty healthy when it came to my cardiovascular system. I exercise regularly, I watch what I eat, I'm not like your typical Wisconsinite and consume tons of alcoholic beverages. No, I'm kind of more of a teetotaler when it comes to that. And I don't smoke anymore. I gave that up years ago. And I'm simply much too young for that, right? You don't need to answer that. But, as I found out, heart disease is the leading cause of death for women in the United States and can affect women at any age. Not to mention, over 60 million women in the US, which is 44%, live with some form of heart disease. Yikes! That doesn't exactly give me the warm, fuzzy feeling, especially knowing that my family history includes heart disease in it. Now obviously, besides genetics, there are other factors that play into that, such as having high blood pressure, and then the lifestyle choices of, you know, smoking and not eating right and being sedentary. Those all lead into the chances or increase your chances as a woman for developing heart disease. And I'm not trying to exclude you men from the conversation, it's just that I don't have any experience in that arena other than as a bystander and watching Marty deal with his issues related to his heart, I can, you know, speak to that. But personally, I can only speak from a woman's point of view. Speaking of Marty, for those of you who don't know, Marty's had two heart attacks and has five stints. And since all that, we've made a major effort at ensuring that the foods we're eating are nutritious and heart healthy. Not that I wasn't health conscious before, it's just when that happens, you kind of take that extra step to make sure you're always eating right. Even if you do slack at times and, you know, fall into temptation and eat a Mickey Lou's, at least you're not doing it every day like maybe you used to. So knowing that, it really came as a surprise when I started having issues with my cholesterol. It struck me as odd, especially because I was now being extra cautious about what I was eating and exercising more and 
I never had problems before. It was never anything I had to worry about. I would go in for my yearly checkup, they'd check my cholesterol and be like, oh, you're good to go. Well, guess what? I started having issues where the doctor was saying, well, your cholesterol is going up. You really should maybe consider going on a statin. And I'd be like, no, not going on a statin. I'll just try to eat better. I'll just exercise more. I'll take red yeast rice. I'll do anything. I'll even eat oatmeal every day for breakfast as long as I don't have to go on that statin. And guess what? It kind of worked. I was able to get that number back down for a little while and then it creeped back up and then the doctor would get on me again and then I'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do better. And then it went down, but then it came back up and it stayed up. And then on top of that, I started having issues with being out of breath. You know, it was just a little bit at first where maybe I couldn't walk as far or fast when we were going for our walks, our daily exercise, where maybe I'd start lagging behind Marty a little bit, which with him, I always outpaced him, you know, especially because of all his issues with his heart disease. I always was way ahead of him. And all of a sudden I started finding myself either keeping up with him or just starting to fall behind. And then I was having issues where I'm walking up the stairs out of breath. Added to that, I started having chest pain, like unexplained, like we get back from a walk and I'd just be like, oh. But it wasn't like anything Marty described, so I just basically blew it off. Which, it's never a good idea to ignore those types of symptoms. If you're experiencing any type of shortness of breath, chest pain, nausea, any kind of pain radiating down your left arm, that's the time when you call 911. However, in my case, it wasn't that acute. It was more or less, like I said, just things that I noticed that were kind of like nagging at me. But even so, after a while, you don't want to ignore those nagging symptoms either because if you continue to have them, that could be a real good indicator that something is wrong. In my case, my primary decided that it would be a good idea for me to wear a heart monitor for a month, which I did. She also recommended that I go through an echocardiogram screening, which I did. She also did an EKG right there in the office and she referred me over to a cardiologist. From there, the cardiologist ordered a slew of tests, including a stress test and a tilt table test. You'll recall, if you saw the video that I did after I met with the cardiologist and talked with him about the results of my echocardiogram and a few of the other tests I had done, I didn't get good news at that visit. At least, nothing that could rule out the possibility that I have heart disease. Since then, however, I've also had several tests, including a calcium score screening, a nuclear stress test, and that ever-elusive tilt table test. <laughs> because I am with the old cardiologist. I decided I was going to take matters into my own hands and I'm going to get answers today one way or another. That's right. I got tired of waiting around. I decided I was going to make an appointment. And as it just so happens, they had openings today because there's supposedly a winter storm rolling through and I'm going to take advantage of that because I'm tired of waiting to find out what's going on with my heart. And frankly, so is Marty. Yeah, let's get this show on the road. My thoughts exactly. We've been sitting around here. I've been trying to get this one last test scheduled, which, by the way, I'll share the story about that later because you won't believe the trouble I've had with that. So today we're gonna go run up to where my doctor's office is and sit down with him and try and get some answers as to the tests I've had so far, what it means for 
going forward do I need surgery do I not you know if I don't need surgery we're out of here now if you recall at the beginning of the video where I said that this whole journey has been a bit of a struggle out of everything I've been through in these last few months that tilt table test has been the biggest <laughs> struggle of all but before I get into that I have a few quick shout outs to give First off, I'd like to give a special shout out to Alan Weiser of Mr. Weiser here on YouTube. Alan is a new fitness creator and I met him when I was filming in Barton. If you're looking to turn over a new leaf this year, shed some unwanted pounds, turn that fat into muscle, Alan's your guy. Be sure to go over and check out his channel and let him know that Sightseeing Sally sent ya. Next, I'd like to give a special shout out of Thanks to Mark from Texas, Steve and Lynn from Washington, and Chris and Crystal from Illinois for all very generously taking that trip trip. And then last, but certainly not least, I want to give a special shout out of thanks to the following for helping me meet my goal by becoming members of Sightseeing Sidekicks. Where were we? Oh yeah, talking about those tests, the calcium score screen. The one time in your life where you want to be a big fat zero. Given the amount of cheese I eat in a day, I thought for sure it was going to be some outrageous number. Guess where I landed on the scoring? Any takers? Well, I'm happy to say I came in with a zero. Yes, I scored a zero. The one time in my life I want to be a... <laughs> and I got it. Next, the nuclear stress test. That came back with positive results as well. Meaning positive as in yay, happy. Not positive as in oh, I gotta go get stints. Fortunately for me, the little bit of trouble I've had with my cholesterol has not done anything to my arteries. I don't have to worry about anything there. Which brings us to the last test, the tilt table test. The one that I've struggled to get scheduled for over a month. I'm serious. I was calling, I made countless phone calls and it was turning into a major pain in the, you know what, Fortunately for me, it turned out that the cardiologist was able to get me in on a day where we were supposed to get this bad winter storm and a bunch of people canceled, opening up his afternoon and a spot for him to do the tilt table test, which I'm happy to say I already got the results back from and you're not going to believe what I learned from this test. Do you know what these are? Here. Let me take them out of the package so you can see exactly what they are. Get the idea now? These lovely looking things are compression hose. And guess who has to wear them now? Yep, me. I'm going to have to wear compression stockings. Because what I found out from that tilt table test is that my body does this really weird thing where it causes my blood pressure to drop significantly. And initially I thought it was when I was exercising, but in reality, it actually has to do with me being on my feet for about 15 minutes is when all the symptoms start. And it was replicated in this test. <laughs> Oddly, this one test was able to replicate my symptoms and it's basically because my nervous system is kind of messed up and it cycles through and does that like every 15 minutes that I'm standing upright. The cardiologist said the best way to treat it is to first try these stockings and if that doesn't help then there's a medication that he can give me. The other thing is is that I'm not to be upright for more than 15 minutes and when I say upright, I mean standing. So that means every 15 minutes I'm supposed to sit down because that'll reset the cycle 
and that way my blood pressure won't drop so much. As far as the question as to how someone like me could end up with heart disease, in my case, it's probably linked to genetics and there is a genetic test I could have done. I haven't had it done yet. The cardiologist believes that I have this particular connective tissue disorder that is the root cause of my issues. But regardless, you heard the stats. There's a reason it's called the silent killer. Heart disease, no matter your age, if you're female, it is the leading cause of death here in the United States. And with 44% of women here in the United States living with some form of heart disease, there's a very good chance that there's someone you know and love who also has it. Ladies, get yourself checked. Until next time, this is Sightseeing Sally.